welcome to our Spotlight Information event with sports performance, coaching and 79 sports mentoring. We've got loads of great content coming up for you. We've got the Dartford Campus Tour. We've also got a dedicated video to them departments and we'll be speaking to the CM and head of 79 Sports as well. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass over to James Butterfield. Over to you, James. Good evening, everyone. I'm hopeful that everyone can hear me. And uh, if, if there is any problems, if you could get in contact with Sean just to make sure that we get the message out to as many people as possible. Um, thank you for joining. The reason why we're here tonight is to hopefully pass on some information to you about the great courses that we offer. There's a whole range of activities which we hope will appeal um, to your passions and interests. Uh, a little bit about myself at the moment. I was a student at North Kent College um, when I was 16 to the age of 19. So I, I understand what it's like to be making the decisions at this stage. Uh, you're currently at school, you're thinking about your options and the opportunities that are in front of you. And sometimes that can be quite daunting. So tonight, hopefully will be a good opportunity for us to alleviate some of those concerns, answer some questions. And by the end of the evening, hopefully you can take away um, an understanding of what college life will be like and what you can expect from us and what we would have as expectations for you as, as students within the department. Um, I joined the department 20 years ago, so I've been here pretty much most of my life now. I've, I've never, never left. And um, we've seen tremendous growth in that time. We've uh, started at Gravesend and moved to Dartford as a, as a campus where we deliver from. Uh, my background was in uh, sports coaching, personal training, and uh, I attended Birmingham University having completed my three years at North Kent College. Um, what that's allowed me to do is have a pretty good understanding of, of different sectors within the sports industry. And we're continuously looking at ways of developing the experience within the department. Um, there's lots of great things that happen here. We have a football academy for both boys and girls. We've launched our 79 Sport Mentoring Program, which James Perry will talk about uh, shortly. And uh, we're always trying to find those different markets which might actually help young people move into university, higher education, apprenticeships or employment on completion of their course. I think for tonight to be really successful, the most important thing is to ask as many questions as you have. I know that Sean has put a facility on here where you can pose anything. Please feel free to do that as we talk through. We will come back to you through the Q&A session just to make sure that you leave tonight with uh, as much information as you, you need to try and make that decision and that next step. Obviously, we can uh, pick some of those conversations up via email or through our admissions team, should you not want to talk to us uh, tonight directly about them. So that's a little bit about, about what we do here. Uh, we'll talk more specifically about the courses that we offer, but we do run from level one, level two and level three. So regardless of your academic profile, when you leave school, we are able and in a position to offer you uh, a place. Um, on whatever that level might be. So I think sometimes there's some, some pressure around where do I go to next? Schools are asking for certain grade boundaries. Uh, obviously, we want people to be working as hard as they can and achieving the best grades possible. Um, but if for any reason you don't do as well as you thought or you do better than you thought, please just mention that to us and then we can obviously go through the options that are available. Um, to access a level three program, we're looking at four to five GCSE grades, grade four or above. If you're a level two student, we're looking at grades that are four grades of three stroke four. And if we're looking at a level one program, we're looking for students that don't have any formal academic qualifications. You might not have passed your GCSEs for a variety of reasons. You might have had some learning difficulties undiagnosed. You might just have not enjoyed school or not engaged particularly well with it. Or you might have had um, uh, some bad performance, and that often happens with, with exams. I appreciate that at the moment, it's unclear how final grades are gonna be developed, but it's really important just to sort of take away from tonight, whatever your profile will be at the end, we are here to help. The most important and probably the final message for me before I pass over to James, is that we're really looking for dynamic, hardworking students. If you can commit to turning up engaging fully and you have a strong passion for sport this is probably a really good place for you to be 
it doesn't have to be that you are the greatest player in the world. Um, we are looking for people that can coach, teach, lead. Um, you might have a real passion as a supporter or an administrator in a chosen sport or in a variety of sports. That's absolutely fine. What we're really keen to do here, though, is to add to the success of what we've done in the last few years. Our sports department success rates have gone um, continuously upwards over the last four years. And it's seen us moving from 85% success up until 96%. Um, two or three years ago. So if that's something that you are concerned about, what's a college education going to look like? And am I going to be able to go to university at the end? The answer is very much yes. Um, you're not going to lose out by studying at college as opposed to staying at school. They're great routes and they're just a different route with different courses and opportunities that are placed in front of you. There's no exams as part of our courses. It's vocational based and we're looking at you to demonstrate your ability in certain areas by doing practical sessions. You might be refereeing at the weekend, which can be cross-referenced to some of your um, leading uh, sports events units. So there's lots of different ways of you proving that you are a very valuable member of the sports industry. So please feel free to ask questions. I know that's a bit of a whistle-stop tour, but just to give you a little flavour of, of what we do and who we are. Um, and like I said, being a former student, I understand that this is quite a difficult decision for some people to make. So please feel free, parents or potential students, to ask away and we'll be more than happy to um, give you those answers this evening and develop some kind of relationship moving forward where we can support and guide as much as we can. So I'm going to pass you over now to James Perry. He's, uh, he's alongside me. So he's going to talk now about the 79 Sport Mentoring Programme which has been designed slightly differently to our main sport curriculum and uh, the target market is for those people competing in high performance programs. So I'll pass you over. Very well done. Uh, hi, yeah, so I suppose I, I better give you a brief uh, overview of myself. Uh, so um, when I was your age, I, I was running for Kent. Uh, I, I ran a middle, middle distance running, I ran at English schools. I was part of the Kent County uh, uh, relay team that won. And uh, I, I engaged quite a lot with the school, had a very positive um, experience with school. Um, my, my school, Ravensbourne School, offered uh, running clubs and they offered um, various fitness activities. And I think that really helped me along the way. Um, I've got three passions. So I've got exercise, fitness and education. And I've really, you know, sort of tried to make sure that these are, these are important factors throughout my life. So, um, Always interested in sports science. Um, I um, went to university, studied sports science, then decided to become a teacher, taught physical education, and, and I knew I wanted to provide more for the young people that I was teaching. So I did a master's degree in strength and conditioning. Um, after that, I, I managed to work with a, a, a host of different high profile athletes, ranging from those who are competing at a club level. Uh, so uh, athletes that are maybe playing football for Gillingham, athletes that are playing uh, rugby for Saracens. And I also had the opportunity to work with a variety of Olympic level athletes as a strength and conditioning coach. Um, I wanted to mix uh, my passion for teaching education uh, with the strength and conditioning uh, and, and other aspects of the performance sport. So um, I now uh, lecture on the 79 Sports Mentoring Programme. Uh, what that is and what it does is it allows uh, athletes with the aspirations to achieve gold, the opportunity to have uh, performance level sport alongside their education. So currently we are supporting athletes that are competing at GB level in judo, weightlifting, uh, England level um, boxing, GB handball and a host of other athletes that often um, struggle uh, with the uh, balancing the, the academic side with, with the actual performance sport side. Uh, what we do is we offer performance sport in uh, nutrition, uh, lifestyle support, strength and conditioning. Within strength and conditioning, we do speed, agility and quickness, uh, power-based training. Um, we also uh, allow our athletes you know, additional time if they have, for example, are competing uh, on the international circuit and they need time away. Uh, we have remote lessons uh, provided for those st students so that they can still engage in the course and they can kind of move forward as a result. 
Uh, we also support athletes from team-based sports. So we have a county rugby player that we're currently supporting at the moment. And we have a, a, a uh, high-level um, football player that ha has aspirations of pushing into, you know, um, potentially a semi-professional professional football and, and I think it really marries things well because whilst we're looking after the athletes academic size we're also looking after the sort of the off-field sports provision that most clubs and um, NGBs can't offer athletes so uh, we're really trying to promote that dual career um, athlete environment uh, like I said um, the, 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 the really positive and, and unique aspect of the 79 sports mentoring program is that it's not a uh, specific a football based uh, academy or you know a, a traditional academy where we're just focusing on one group what we're looking at doing is we're looking at finding talented athletes from a whole host of different different uh, avenues you could be a modern pentathlete a triathlete you could be a rugby player you could be a, uh, someone that's that that's into winter sports uh, the, the way that we work we can support you in the off-field sports science provision when we mean off-field we mean the nutrition the SNC, the active recovery, all those other aspects that most clubs find it very difficult to sort of deliver to those to, to, to their athletes. So, like I said, uh, and, and what James said earlier, if you have any questions whatsoever and you want to um, speak with us, we will be available for you. We can get back to you um, via 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 message, or if you want to ask uh, questions live, I'm more than happy to do that. So, um, yeah, that's basically 79 Sports Mentoring in a nutshell. It's a sports science based program that is offering a, a performance sport uh, element to it to support the needs of uh, young athletes aspiring to compete at Commonwealth and Olympic uh, level or the very highest state they, they see fit in their sport. So if you are district, county or above and you have aspirations of performing at a high level and you're interested in sport and exercise science, when we mean sport and exercise science, I mean anatomy and physiology, um, nutrition, strength and conditioning, exercise fitness and health, to name a few of the modules that we cover, this would be a course that I think you would not only enjoy, your performance would benefit tremendously as a result. We're already seeing athletes that have been engaging in the course for the first 10 weeks perform astronomically. I mean, their level of improvement is, is absolutely incredible because they do not have access to this level of support. So that's it. Perfect. Thank you both for that lovely introduction. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm now going to be showing you the Dartford Campus Tour video and a dedicated department video as well. So please enjoy.
So I hope that you guys sort of enjoyed that and it kind of gave you a, a, a look at, you know, what we have to offer in regards to, to North Kent College and 79 Sports. Um, like I said, at this point, we're, I mean, we're going to probably talk about what, what we can offer in regards to sort of the academic aspect of it and the sort of provision. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I suppose at, at this stage where a lot of the questions um, are posed to us is about what happens when you come to North Kent College? What's the experience going to be like? Why would it be different from school? And once my college education is finished, where am I going to go to next? So if we kind of break that down into sort of small chunks, a college education is designed to be completely different to what you do at school. Naturally, we do have the educational aspects and we have the certain um, regulations and boundaries around attendance and engagement. But what we're trying to do here is to develop your skill sets um, to make you employable, to make you uh, understanding of what the requirements are to work in that industry, but most importantly, for you to see a different side of education. Probably at this stage, most people have gone through the process of school being maths, English, history, science, nine or 10 different subjects, and you might enjoy and tap into three or four of those, but some you might not see the relevance to or, or particularly enjoy. That's for some people. Others might have had a really positive experience of school and they're just looking for a, a change of scenery. College is different. Our timetabling is very different. Instead of working through an 8.45 to 3.30 school day, we'll be looking to have lectures running between nine and five o'clock. But it might mean that on some days you come in at 11 and you finish at two o'clock. It might be that on certain days you come in at nine and finish at five. So the, the working day is designed specifically to make sure that people are getting ready for work. Working days are nine to five and often beyond that. Anyone that's looking to work in the sports coaching, leisure industry, personal training, fitness, the working hours are going to be unsociable. They're evenings and weekends. Uh, and we have to try and prepare students for that as best as possible. Pre-COVID times, we had a very strong work experience um, and work-based learning program which was designed specifically to give students, young people, the opportunities to work. You might have had placements at school, although, again, we're appreciating that the fact that most schools weren't able to deliver their work-based learning programmes because of the, the, the current situation. What we are desperately trying to do, though, is to make sure that when students are leaving us, that they feel that they've had a relevant experience of work. That means coming out of an education environment being required to turn up, engage, lead sessions. It might be working in schools, in gyms, as sports coaches, but understanding that they are then responsible for delivering aspects of, of coaching and teaching that really, up until that stage, they might have only ever taken part in, but never been responsible to deliver. So that's one of the key things. Um, it's hard at this stage to try and get people to consider what they're gonna do next, there are sort of some clear routes about what we can do. One of them is university. That's the natural progression for some people. We are understanding of the fact that that now costs a lot of money. And for some people, they don't want to do that. But we still have of our current second years at the moment, 15 people applying to go to university, which is great. We're currently looking at developing a level four program. So for those students that complete their level three, there is a level four option to continue for one extra year. And there's also an apprenticeship scheme that's run through the college. That is a sports-based uh, apprenticeship. So you'd be working in primary schools. You would continue your training um, with the college, but you'd also undertake PE lessons and you'd work on classroom support for young students. They are primary schools, so it gives you those, um, the, those opportunities to develop the cognitive skills, especially in PE, of running, starting, stopping, changing direction, catching, throwing all of the principles that you probably nearly mastered at, at 16 or 17, but for a five or six year old, they need those positive role models. And that's what we're trying to create as well. There's also nothing wrong with not knowing what to do next. Uh, there's lots of students that come to us and they're really not sure. Sport becomes their primary choice because it's their favorite subject at school or the PE teacher has inspired them, motivated them the most, or they're very passionate about watching them playing at the weekend. That's fine. There's no problem with not knowing just yet. What we would say to you is, though, start to think about what is the next step for you? What's the best next step? Now, if that's staying at school, 
okay, that's understandable, that's fine. If coming to college is, is the right move for you and you're looking for a, a more challenging adult environment where you can develop other skills, North Kent College is a great opportunity for you, but to give it some serious thought, there's nothing worse than making the wrong decision. So it's important that you give it plenty of time to work out what the next step is for you. Um, as I mentioned before, boys and girls, we have a football academy, but anyone that's interested in playing football, um, the day is structured slightly differently. So anyone as part of that programme, they'll train on a Monday, Tuesday and a Friday. They'll play competitive games on a Wednesday afternoon. And there's also a structured fixture list against professional academies at under 16s and 17s. So that's another, another layer of the support that we're trying to give people because there's still an aspect for a lot of young players that they would like to um, have the opportunity to move into professional football as a player. Now, everyone knows that that's a very difficult thing to move into, but it's not impossible. We've had three or four people that have moved into professional football um, um, from the college. So that can happen, but it obviously takes the dedication and hard work that is required to kind of get there as well. So if you're part of a football academy, Monday, Tuesdays and Fridays you train, Wednesdays you play, and your academic subjects are put around that day. So you're looking at being in almost five days a week and it's gonna be nine till probably around four, four thirty, five o'clock on a couple of those days. If you're not part of the football academy, you're looking to do anything else, the 79 Sport Mentoring Programme, we operate over a three day week. So at the moment, they're Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We have Tuesdays and Thursdays off. The reason we do that is because we are very conscious that people are training, especially if they're in high performance programmes, they're training outside of, of college hours and we want to support that. That's the whole purpose behind that programme. It's supporting them to have time to rest and recover, learn to drive, um, have those other social experiences as well. So that's, that's how those days are worked. If you're not in the football academy and not in 79 sport mentoring, you're looking at having between a three and a four day week. Um, for those students that don't pass maths and English, that's a grade four or higher, there is a retake policy within the college, which you'll find in any school or college as well. So that would be either functional skills or a GCSE programme. So there are lots of different aspects that go into being a sports student within the department. Um, everyone is going to be slightly different. And like I mentioned at the start, if you're still unsure about where you would fit into the model and how that would look, please feel free to message us and then we can go through some of the other, the other questions that you might have. And I think lastly, the students that come to the college have fun. They, they make great friends. They constantly hang out with each other. They're, they're, and it is a really interesting sort of mix between school life and university life. You're going to have a lot more responsibility put on your shoulders. You're going to have, you know, uh, a, a different level of respect in regards to sort of how you carry yourselves. You're in a, a professional environment when expecting you to wear your 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 sports kit and engage with you know, adult conversations but the students that are on these courses become friends they spend time with each other i've just finished a secret santa session with some of some of our, our uh, young athletes and you know it's it's a really positive atmosphere in which to sort of pursue your career if that's going to be in 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 sport um, I think you wouldn't find a better place than doing it here. Okay, so I think we're going to hand back to Sean now. If uh, Sean is there, she's coming back. I to am. You. Don't you worry, yeah. I'm here. Um, perfect. That was a great insight, guys. Um, now we're going to move on to the Q&A section. So if you can just pop the Q&As up on your screen and work your way through them. I think we've got about three or four in there at the moment. Um, and enjoy answering them. <laughs> Hey, right, James, you can have the first one. Okay, so what level do I need uh, to be at to join 79 Sports? Really interesting question. So uh, most importantly, okay, we need someone with aspirations to be outstanding, dedicated, uh, pushing themselves you know, uh, incredibly hard. So we're talking about district, county, uh, or above as, as initial requirement. However, if there is a certain spark within you, so for example, we have a young athlete that, that sort of came to us, begged us to, to, to sort of let them onto the course this year, and he has been absolutely incredible. Uh, and, you know, if you have that sort of drive and that level and you're a club athlete, 
uh, we might consider you. But traditionally, it's got to be, you know, that district county level in order to sort of progress on from there. Another question was, uh, can you explain about the strength and conditioning? Yes, I can. <laughs> uh, so uh, in order for you to perform in, in any sort of a performance level, so for example, the, the needs of an Olympic bobsledder and the needs of a premiership rugby player differ by degree and not kind. So what we do is we do a series of uh, strength and conditioning classes. They, we actually run six hours of S&C plus additional S&C, so maybe up to 10 hours of strength and conditioning for our athletes a week. Don't you worry, don't freak out. Okay, that's not 10 hours for everybody, but for those athletes that need access to things like the Olympic lifts, uh, speed, agility, and quickness, plyometric movement, um, basic hypertrophy. So hypertrophy is in order to gain muscle, basic power-based training, so to gain explosive power. We sort of uh, design and augment um, training sessions Base, traditionally group-based, potentially um, bespoke um, independent base training sessions in order to put, push our athletes onto that next level. The next ones are, what progress do you do, you, do the students have? Okay, so progress for students is really interesting. And, and I think for a lot, of, a lot of people, it's what you put into it. Um, progress can be defined in different ways. We've got students that have not engaged in school. We've had People that have been homeschooled, but then have gone on and completed a level three program and gone on to university. What I would say is whatever your level and whatever your starting point, you'll be encouraged to achieve beyond your expectations. So we mark on past merit and distinction. If you come in with GCSE grades predominantly at four or above, we'd be expecting you to be working at distinction level. And we would we would not deviate from that. When we talk about where students go next, that becomes a real personal choice. Whether you wanna to go to university, for some people that works out really well. I went, James went. For other people, that's not where they see themselves going. So progress is, is in two or three forms. Progress from level one, you might go through to level three, that's brilliant. We've got a student at the moment who hasn't been in education since year eight of secondary school, and he's doing really well. They're on a level three program now, and they're independent learning, They've got 100% attendance. Their progress is incredible. Um, for other people, they might find education, academic work a little bit easier. Going to university might be their, their progress. So really work, um, training, further training, higher education, they're our progression routes. And that's traditionally where we've kind of pushed people towards. And there's a very strong leaning towards people that want to go into coaching, nature of our department, personal training as well. Um, slightly different department, but there's a lot of interest in that. And obviously university and PE teaching, that's kind of where we go from there. Um, good question come up here about the entry requirements. We did mention that, we just touched on it at the start, but for a level one student, no formal entry requirements. For level two students, we're looking at four grades, three downwards, three twos. And if you are a level three student, uh, we're looking for four to five grade fours or above. And again, for the 79 Sport Mentoring Programme, we'll look at each individual case. So if you're not sure whether you fit into that bracket, let us know. We can have that conversation. And as James mentioned, not every student um, that we have is on a high performance international pathway. But what they are demonstrating is that desire to, to get as close to it as possible. And as we know, not everyone can do that. Um, the question on there at the moment that's just come up that says, does this course involve traveling to different places? Um, I'm not entirely sure if that means to different places in the world. We do, we have got a plan for uh, an international trip for our second years. Uh, in the past, we've gone to Club La Santa, students have gone skiing. So there's some international um, travel for those things. In terms of what we expect here, we have uh, our Dartford campus, which is where our sports courses are based, but also we're, there's a move at the moment to moving um, towards West Kent and Hadlow. The college has undergone um, a merger between other colleges. So there is an opportunity for students to study, not just in Dartford, but also into the middle parts of Kent. So if you're watching today and you don't live close to Dartford, you might be based in Maidstone or Seven Oaks. There is a really good opportunity there that we might be able to look at which campus would uh, be closest to you, make your journey as easy as possible. So if you're a Dartford student, you would be required to be at Dartford, but if you're somewhere close to Tunbridge or Hadlow, then that's obviously a, an, another opportunity for you to study closer to home. Um, 
how do I apply for 79 Sport? Well, the best thing to do for this one is um, send us an email. So um, if, if you would like to send it to 79sportmentoring at northkent.ac.uk. So that's 79, the number 79, sportsmentoring at northkent.ac.uk. We can pick that up and we can have some conversation with you. If for any other reason you can't remember that or it doesn't work or you get it get the spellings wrong, you can just go through to the main main college um, information site and they can pass it on. Also, you can take a look at what we do on Instagram. So if you type in 79 Sports Mentoring on Instagram, you can jump on our Instagram page. You can see some of the, the things that we get up to in regards to sort of the training aspects, at least, and some of the athletes that we're providing support for. And you can get in contact with us, just, just direct message us on, on our Instagram, preferably through the 79 uh, Sports at northcan.ac.uk. But if you can't do that, find us on Instagram. Um, we can get in contact with you that way. Excellent. Okay, there's one here about uh, applying. How do we apply? So the college website, I'm sure Sean will talk about this towards the end. In terms of the college website, North Kent College, if you go onto it, you can apply now and that will lead you onto the, the, the different course options that we have. There is a search bar that you can look onto there. Um, the 79 sport mentoring ones on there, the sports coaching and performance level three, level two and level one. So apply. If you apply for the wrong course, it doesn't matter. We will call you. We'll make an email contact with you once you've applied and we'll make sure that we've got the right information for you and get you onto the right interview pathway. And when I say it's an interview, it's not a job interview. It's about us talking to you about you, what you would like to do next and how we can help you. So onto the college website, um, apply now. There's a button in the top right-hand corner and we can do that. And if there's anyone thinking about Hadlow and West Kent as well, if you're close to those areas, I'd go through the college, um, the North Kent site at the moment, and then we can pick it up and, and contact you from there. Um, Universities that students progress on to, um, it varies. I mean, it's it, it really depends on, on where you want to study. I mean, the, the conversations that I have with students most of the time is that if you're someone that has grown up in and around a town, you like being in busy places, you like cinemas, potentially bars and opportunities to go out and socialise, I would suggest that you go to a city university. So Manchester, Birmingham, Leeds, London, they're all great options. For people that might have a niche specialist market, they might be into outdoor pursuits. You've got Lincolnshire, you've got Northamptonshire, um, and it really depends on, on where you see yourself going. Uh, if you're a rugby specialist, you might want to be thinking about potentially going to a rugby playing university, Cardiff, um, Glamorgan, South Wales. Um, it, it really depends. A lot of our students have gone to the South Coast. So we've got Brighton, Bournemouth. We have a lot there, Portsmouth. Uh, we've had students going to UEL, which has become really popular for sports courses. Uh, James has come from uh, Canterbury Christchurch University, where um, a number of our students will apply to each year. University of Greenwich is very local to us with campuses all through Kent. University of Kent. Um, again is very popular so my question would be as you think about university you can either stay at home where you can have your parents do your washing for you or you can move just far enough away so your parents can't follow you uh, and you can have a little bit of an independent style of living whether you're in a rural area or a built-up area is really personal choice my my advice to any student looking at university is choose the place and not the course because a lot of the courses are very similar you can do sports science anywhere in the country, but choose the campus which is right for you and whether that's closer to home or further from home um, and whether it's in a built up area or a quieter area, choose, choose around there. Um, question around, do we have to wear a uniform? Yes, we have a uniform, Jane. But they're nice uniforms. You know, they've got, they're, they're from proper designers and they're, 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 they look good. So uh, you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, it's mandatory that you wear a uniform. If you were to work in, in, you know, in a leisure industry, a performance sport industry, if you were going to work you know, for bases or, or a, a national governing body, you'd be asked to wear some sort of uh, uniform. So, but they're up to date. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty comfortable. Uh, you're not going to be wearing a, a tie or anything like that. So just enjoy it. It's a free stash sometimes. Yeah, it's also, um, it's all Nike kit. We, we realise that most of our students will buy into it more if it's it's something that they can wear to and from college and they feel like it's it's fashionable. Um, if you're a 79 sports student, it looks like this. Um, 
if you are a football academy student, they are uh, wearing Umbro kit, which is really nice. It's football specific. Umbro have just taken over the sponsorship of England rugby as well. So they're very, very successful in what they're doing. And if you're a non-academy student, you'll wear a blue Nike kit and it's all provided through Kit Locker. So it's an online shop. People can buy kit and then they can just go and um, uh, get it delivered straight to their home. So again, it's a, it's a good opportunity to have some distinguishable qualities of you as a sports student, um, but we don't have a uniform like you'd have at school. We just wear sportswear. So you'll look um, fit for the industry. Um, a question here, I'm not a professional athlete. Can I still join the course? It sounds amazing. I think that might be the 79 sports mentoring. Uh, if it is, uh, what, we, what we need is we need for you to be firstly uh, dedicated with a drive to move forward in your sport. Secondly, you need to be performing at at least a club level. So it can't just be I'm really interested in you know badminton, I'm really interested in boxing. You need to be competing at club level. It'll be a conversation that we have with your coaches, whether or not you know we think that you will move forward in that sport. It may not be will he be will he or she be professional. It might be do you think this athlete might progress onto a uh, onto a club coach or beyond from there. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean you don't have to be a professional athlete in order to engage in the 79 sports mentoring program. I would say with that as well um, that we have a lot of athletes that come here and a lot of students that come here who might not have matured yet at 16. I don't talk about matured, I talk about physical maturity. Um, and I'll give you an example. When I was 13, I was probably about five foot three. When my brother was 13, he was six foot two. So naturally, your, your physicality uh, and your ability to play certain sports might change in the years between 16 and 18 so if you're a rugby player they're probably not going to make some def definitive decisions about you until you're 22 23 if you're a footballer sadly the decisions are often made at 14 and 15 so we are very conscious of that one of the students that james mentioned earlier plays golf the improvement in him as a golfer in the last six months is incredible not because he's had um, Any additional golf support? Yeah, he, he has just practiced and practiced and practiced and he has a lesson every now and then, but his strength and conditioning stuff has taken over now as well. He's very passionate about that. He's hitting the ball further and his handicap is really decreasing quite quickly because he's fully bought in. So if you're thinking about it, whether that's in the football academy, whether it's in the 79 sports stuff, just send us an email, let me know, and then James and I will have a conversation. And if it's a football-based question, we'll pass you on to the football guys as well. So I'll go through the email again at the end so you can have a chat. People can email me tonight or over the next over the weekend and we'll, we'll get back to you. Um, courses, where are the courses based? We did sort of touch on that. Uh, we have a Dartford base and we're also going to be having a base in Tunbridge. So two parts of the, the county. Obviously, we have the North Kent area around here. Our major catchment areas for there are South East London, sort of Thamesmead, Abbey Wood, Bexley Heath, Bexley, Sidcup, uh, Dartford, Swanley, and then we're going into sort of North Fleet, Longfield, um, Hartley, the back end part of, of Dartford as well. So um, Erith, Belvedere, if anywhere in those commutable areas, uh, there's also a college shuttle bus that picks you up from Dartford train station if you come in on the train and it will bring you in and it's free of charge. Um, do I have to pay for anything on the course, James? If you are 16, uh, 17, 18, the course is completely free. So the, the stuff that we are offering uh, would be predominantly based at universities. This level of support for athlete provision is you know, something that you'd receive at university or American collegiate level. Um, but you know, we, we have funding to sort of provide something similar uh, to you guys for no cost to you. Okay. Uh, there's a question here about how many hours of football or netball but will I be able to play a week? Um, in terms of football, they'll train from 9 till 10.30 on a Monday, Tuesday and a Friday, and then they'll be playing games on a Wednesday afternoon. So you're looking at somewhere around 10 hours per week because James obviously um, does some additional stuff with the student athletes. They have an active recovery session. They have strength conditioning, fitness-based sessions. So it's about 12 hours of, of football fitness-based activities per week. Um, and obviously games um, are part of that as well. Um, same with netball. Our drive is now that we have enough girls to come into the college that are 
especially especially interested in playing netball and it would be the same model probably two training sessions a week strength conditioning session and um, game day but we're obviously have the netball academy is linked to the 79 sport mentoring we're currently supporting two netballers at the moment and they have again they've improved massively just just being involved in that performance sports ground they're understanding what it takes to, you know in regards to nutrition s and c uh, active recovery, cardio-based training, and they're making uh, leaps and bounds and improvement in their their sports performance metric. And I can't wait till January when I can actually see these girls uh, performing again out on the netball court. I mean, they've already uh, many of them have got you know player of the matches where they wouldn't normally get such such awards. So it's it's really encouraging to see them thrive in this environment. Okay, uh, we've got a good question here. Which professional clubs have your students gone on to play for? Well, Ethan Pinnock is one that's currently playing at the moment. He's at Brentford. Um, and I think he was responsible for relegating Charlton last year. I'm not entirely sure if that's accurate, but I think he scored in the last minute to send Charlton down. So Ethan Pinnock was one. Um, Eddie Alsop was a guy that is now a professional at Charlton. He did his first year with us, played against Charlton in a, in a friendly game, uh, one of the marquee games that was set up. And they took him, so he's now in his second year of his um, scholar, his professional scholar at um, Charlton Athletic. Uh, Chris Lewington was a professional goalkeeper with um, Ebbs Fleet, but they were uh, not Ebbs Fleet. They were, um, oh, come on, James, you've got to remember. I know Dagenham and Redbridge. Nothing Dag about football, okay. sorry guys, nothing. Dagenham and Redbridge. He was the goalkeeper for Dagenham and Redbridge. He's now playing at Welling United. Um, and we had one student who went to Burnley um, probably about seven or eight years ago. So there's four or five that have made it through. But this year we've had three students go on trial to professional clubs, two at MK Dons, one at Watford. Um, last year we had... Uh, ben Branch went on trial at West Ham. He had a three-week trial with them. Um, and there were three other boys that, that were on long-term trials with Crystal Palace um, and uh, Swansea. So that's, that's always a really good, attractive proposition. Our Football Academy boys, the first team last year, went um, on a trial, um, sorry, went on tour, October half-term, and they played against Derby County, Coventry, uh, they trained at Melwood, Liverpool's training grounds, played at St George's against the futsal team, um, and they had a game against Burton Albion. So there's lots of good marquee games that go on through the year. We've played Leicester City in the past, uh, Birmingham, West Brom, uh, MK Dons a few times, AFC Wimbledon. So those games are really good, which is which is important for them to actually see the level of of the football that they're trying to aspire to. And then the last question we got here is how much of the course is practical and how much is coursework? Um, we try and make it about 70% practical and 30% written. Now, if you're doing a level three, it's the equivalent to A levels. So it's important that we have that academic rigor that it actually stands up against A levels. We, we understand that's important. Um, but what we do try and do is use the skills that people have. Most of you are kinesthetic learners. You like to do it, you like to get up, try it, make mistakes, but but give it another go and you like to be coached or you like to work in coaching. So uh, yes, there is classroom time. We can't get away from that. That's probably what we do. Some of the units we do though, fitness testing, fitness training and programming, sports coaching, practical individual sports, practical team sports, exercise, health and lifestyle. Every student will do two hours of fitness every week. Um, that goes for the 34 weeks of college. It's important for you to be fit and healthy and, and to learn new things. So there's a whole range of things that are designed to just make your experience as fun and practical as possible. I can see Sean's come back into view. So I think it's time to pass back to her and I'm sure she'll reconfirm the uh, email addresses and I'll do our one as well at the end, Sean, if that works best. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, just to quickly obviously mention, if you are interested in any of the courses that we have mentioned this evening, um, please head over to our website and apply online. The apply online button is on the homepage in the top hand corner. Um, as obviously James did mention, the 79, it might be great to, to have a little chat with them before you just go ahead and apply. Um, James, did you just want to quickly mention the email again? Yeah, it's 79 as in the number. So 
Sport Mentoring, so S-P-O-R-T, Mentoring, M-E-N-T-O-R-I-N-G, at northkent.ac.uk. So 79, Sport Mentoring, at northkent.ac.uk. Perfect, thank you. And just to kind of give a bit more of clarity on that, we will be sending a follow-up email to all pre-registrants with the email addresses, so you're able to get that a lot easier. Um, so don't worry if you haven't noted that down. Those of you that are watching on Facebook, you can head over to the event page, and that also has contact details on there as well. Um, so don't worry if you haven't noted it down. There is other ways that you can get around it. Um, and obviously, yeah I hope you all enjoyed it um I mean I have it was great insight as always guys thank you very much thank you. um and have a lovely evening thank you I'm, I'm off training the athletes now so well enjoy <laughs> thanks bye, bye. bye.